Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. How amazing would it be if you could practice because you want to, not because you have to? Learn how to improve your cash flow and increase your passive income now. Go to moneyripples.com or find their podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, to learn more. (laughs) All right, TCB listeners, I have an incredible guest today, and that is actually Dr. Monique Andrews. Dr. Monique, how are you doing today? Oh, fantastic. How are you? It's good. I'm on the other side of Victoria, probably like 10 minutes from where you are. So it's a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't know. I, I think you have to be under a rock not to know who you are, but why don't you share a little bit about, you know, who you are. Um, also, but you know, like one of the leaders in the profession that's stepping up as well. Oh, thanks, Ed. Uh, for those people that don't know me, I'm, most people refer to me as Dr. Mo. I am a chiropractor first and foremost. I'm also a neuroscientist. I've been an educator for a long time and I'm pretty obsessed with neuroscience mostly and uh, spend a lot of time talking about the mind-body continuum. So that's probably as short a bio as I can think of. (laughs) The mind-body continuum. Yeah, well, I've been in the last handful of years I've really delved into teaching meditation and breath work and uh, you know that consciousness and neuroscience have really blossomed in the last 10 years or so and so my angle on that is sort of self-directed neuroplasticity. Okay have you noticed that is, is there been like an up uptake of like people who are want, looking for or seeking more of this type of mind body continuum lately? Well, I mean, right now with everything that's happening, you know, it's time, I'm not sure when this podcast will air, but we're in the middle of the COVID 19 pandemic and everybody now is finally looking for, you know, stress reducing ways to alleviate the anxiety and fear that they're having. So I see a lot of offers. I mean, I guess on social media, everything gets directed to what you're looking at, you know, confirmation bias and all but I see a ton of information around how to meditate, do breath work, what have you. And so I've been, you know, in that arena from a, on the, you know, really blending sort of the Western neuroscience with Eastern philosophy. And that's something that's been a passion of mine for quite some time. It's kind of crazy when you really think about it, how like, there, I don't think there's anyone, well, there, I'm sure there's some people who, who have not experienced some sort of fear, anxiety, stress around what's going on. And that's including like, children like this is everyone at one time globally have experienced you know a cortisol spike oh yeah and there's some great resources online especially you mentioned like kids and that's a real special gift to to find a way to help them navigate you know in the right languaging and all that Um, and there's some great resources online for helping kids sort of deal with this current state Yeah. yeah Well, one of the things we love about the, you know, to, to do on the uh, TCB podcast is also we love affirmations. We love um, words of meaning. We love original quotes even. So do you have some, uh, some words you'd love to drop on doctors today? Yeah, I guess something that I always say is if you change someone's brain, you change their life. Mm-hmm. And uh, that might sound sort of like, wow, how do you do that? I'm like, well, if you're a chiropractor, every time you adjust somebody, you're changing their brain. Mm. and. Uh, that's one of the biggest gifts, right? That's what our, the newest research has told us, that when you adjust the spine, you actually change structure and function of the brain. Wow. And I think that's where the conversation should be happening in the chiropractic office. And that's part of what my most recent mission in terms of educating chiropractors is around the science of chiropractic. So if I, if I adjust a patient, can I, can I say, 
that I've affected their immune system. I didn't say whether good or bad, but I mean, it, it, does it affect their immune system? You function? can absolutely say that when you adjust somebody, you impact the immune system. And there is plenty of basic science research in chiropractic that show changes in immune biochemical markers. What you can't say, and please don't say, is chiropractic boosts the immune system. <laughs> we don't have that clinical science data, but we certainly have enough to make correlative statements like, when I adjust you, I'm impacting your immune system. And, and, and I would follow that up with saying, that doesn't mean you're not gonna get sick or you're mm. not gonna get a virus. It might mean that you have a better response to challenges so that you don't get as sick for long or as intensely. We can't put numbers to things like that, but we can definitely say that when you adjust somebody, there's an impact on immunity. Yeah. I mean, and can you, can you say it's a, you, you positively affect the immune yeah, system? Yeah, you can say that. And, and say in that. fact, because the research shows, like the, everyone has heard about those studies that look at interleukin and CD4 and HIV patients, mm -hmm. and that you actually see a positive augmentation in those immune uh, biomarkers. Yeah. You know what's interesting too is like, because I'm on, I'm literally, like I've never been so incredibly busy in my life. And it's more for, from a support perspective of just like from eight or nine in the morning, it's all work. And um, one thing that I'm kind of observing, and maybe this is more discussion based, is that do you think that because a lot of the chiros who aren't practicing right now, do you think, feel like maybe they've lost a little bit of the sense of who they are and their, their identity? Um, because we are people who adjust and you know we know we get that positive we i got i when i was in practice i got just as much back from being in practice with working with people as i as i did when i gave the adjustment so do you think that that's probably part of the stress and anxiety as well definitely we know that from people like when people retire for example it's like all of a sudden it's like who the hell am i if i'm not yeah. my job x and I think because as chiropractors, what we do is not just a job, but it's so much our life and, and like the essence of who we are. I think I'm sure there are many chiropractors and I've spoken to many of them who really are struggling right now in sort of like just that real gray zone of, you know, almost panic, but you know, we're all hopeful, right? I mean, you know, as chiropractors, it, we tend to have an optimistic perspective and so we're hopeful but at the same time you know one foot is 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 hopeful and the other foot's going what the fuck's going to happen yeah 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 i mean and everyone is feeling that i don't know anyone who is not feeling that right now yeah because re in reality i mean any this could go anywhere i know the narrative i've created <laughs> it's going to be over real soon <laughs> on the first first yeah. of may yeah <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I mean, it, but it's, you know, it's, it, I do see, and I, I am observing it and I'm encouraging people too, is to go in like, the inner, like start with doing the inner work. And I think a lot more people are, are doing that versus the outer work. Right. Like, um, and you know, there's such a focus on mindset or not just mindset, but skill set upgrade right now, I would say, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, what's really interesting is that I think every, if you're, you know, I would be surprised to meet a chiropractor that didn't at some point do a little bit of personal development work. And, but for the most part, I think people gloss that over. And if you haven't really done the work to figure out your shit, you're feeling it now. Everyone's exposed. Yeah. In some way. Like I'm not yes. saying every, yeah, we're all, we're all seeing it. Like, I mean, whether it's your health whether it's with relationships. I mean, there's people who are confined with their partner. They've never <laughs> been confined. Like, so everyone's kind of seeing different, how they're operating and maybe making, yeah. doing some work. So I like how this discussion comes back to the mind body continuum, yeah. because that's really what I think a lot of people really are, are starting to focus on is really looking at like, why am I here? What am I doing? Am I really happy? you know, all of those different discussions and oh, yeah. with happiness, I'm going to bring it into the, I'm going to, that's my segue into the struggle. <laughs> so this is the shit sandwich. It's like, so everybody has a, has eaten the crap sandwich at some point in their life. 
and yeah. especially Cairo's, it seems. So tell us a time when you know, just drop it on us, like a time where you struggled, like you just fell flat on your face, you experienced the struggle, you made it through and what you learned from that. And then, you know, even more so, like, how do you apply that to your life or your business and to the people that you mentor today? Yeah, you know, uh, I can think of a time when I really struggled personally that bled into my professional life as well, which is when I was in practice and my father passed mm. and I wasn't ready. And if you've had, if you've lost somebody like a parent or somebody really close to you, um, there's a weird thing that happens. If you don't like fall apart right away, you feel like you're fine for about the first two or three months. And then, all of a sudden one day it just hits you. And I was in practice when that happened. I took a couple of weeks off. I, I think I probably could have taken about a year off and maybe it, it would have been in a better place, but it really, it really took me by surprise the level of, I won't say I was incapacitated, but it was like I was full bandwidth all the time. Like I didn't, people couldn't physically touch me. I couldn't deal with any level of stress. I was just like a pot on the boil, you know? And it really made me question who I was, why I'm doing what I do. And so there I was in practice and not wanting to be there. And I think that happens to most chiropractors at some point in their journey where they're in their practice and they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it took a lot of work to get out of that hole. And um, I did with lots of really great therapy. But, you, you know, it's for me, it was a real, you can't get through this alone. And we need thoughtful advisors and mentors. And, um, yeah, that. Do you think that there's, like, phases? Like, like a honeymoon phase with practice and then, like... A I feel like there's phases of practice that people go through. A hundred percent. I remember yeah. I got, I was when my wife and I went into practice together and we went straight into building our own practice. And I used to use car analogies all the time. And so we built a beautiful machine, right? Right out of the get go spent like over a hundred grand on build out. Like it wow. was deluxe. And uh, somebody once told us, you know, if you are, um, if you want to have a beautiful space, then do it right at the beginning because nobody wants to feel like they're paying for your renos. So <laughs> right out of the gates, you know, we built this beautiful thing. Yeah. That's great. And uh, I can't remember my point. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Phases, like, like the honeymoon oh, yeah. phase. And then there's like, oh man, I, I suck phase. And then there's the... Yep. <laughs> So the first piss and vinegar phase was oh, just like boom. That. And then, uh, I, yeah, that's, I call that the initial, if you're a driver and, and a graduating student, we were in the piss and vinegar phase and I got yeah. to the end of one year. And I remember actually was sitting and having dinner with a guy Reekman. And I said to him, is this it? Mm. Where does it go from here? And, and we ended up having a great conversation and I stayed in practice for another 10 years, but, wow. um, yeah, you know, there, it's interesting. And there's something that happens, I think, to chiropractors. So you, we got through the piss and vinegar, hung through. My father died somewhere in the middle of that. And, and there's something that happens around 10 years. And I think it's a time when you either, you're like in it for the long haul. And I've got friends, you know, that have been practicing for 40 years. Or you pivot and you go in another direction. And that's what happened to me. Yeah, Totally. I mean, that. so I was in practice just going on 13. It would have been actually over 13 years going on 14. And then, um, well, you know, life circumstance happens. Yeah. But there was definitely, there was that point probably around the 10 year mark where I, I remember the day that we hit like 700 visits in a week. Wow. And, and I was like, wow, okay. And now what? And so I asked my coach and he goes, 800. And I go, I, this, is that what, yeah. is this it? <laughs> is that what it's, it's the, about? It's the because problem want, with goal setting, right? It's the problem with goal setting. What, yeah. what happens when you get there? You know, do you remember, um, remember Live Aid? Bob Geldof? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. And so uh, 
he created this thing. Was it called Live Aid or Band Aid to start? Live Aid. I, I think, think it was it Live was. Aid, yeah. Yeah, so they had these concerts all over the world on the same weekend. For those of you that don't know, look it up. It was probably, <laughs> I think, the largest sense of community that certainly me as a Gen Xer had ever experienced. Mm. And so Bob Geldof creates this amazing thing, brings the whole world together in concert. And he, his, there's a great book, and the book is called Is That It? And he, oh. he recalls the point when he's standing on stage and he's holding his fist up and he's like, fuck, is that it? And um, I think that happens to every chiropractor. It's like, is, am I in it forever? Or, okay, I think I've learned everything I've learned. And so for me, after about 12 years, I got to the, I think I've learned what I'm going to learn from being in practice. Yeah. And there's lots of ways to serve. And yeah. you don't have to be over a table to be serving in this profession. That's interesting, Conrad. You know, because like, I mean, here's, here's where you made the shift, right? The pivot, right? And like so many doctors are trying to pivot or are pivoting right now. Yeah. And then even myself, I had to make a pivot, right? Out of survival necessity. And there's a lot of doctors out there. The reality is it's survival necessity right now. So they, get, they have to pivot too. Yeah. So I, I totally empathize with them. I, get, I feel their pain. Um, but, you know, moving forward and looking forward, I, I do feel things, you know, things are going to be different, but they're going to be better in the future as well. So yeah, positive. I think, well, you know, one way to look at this is, I'm really getting tired of the word pivot, but one way to look at this <laughs> is how many times in your life do you get to start over? Yeah. That where there's like such a massive pattern interrupt. So when we left practice, we went and we went into education and we're there for six years and then whoop, another hiccup and it's time to start over. And yeah. so that's where I'm at again in my life, starting over. And we can see that as a welcome opportunity, not saying it's not ever terrifying, but that opportunity to start your life over, I think, you know, that's a blessing really, if you can shift your mind around it. Yeah. And I think that's why I don't like, I, you're right. I, that, that word I've been avoiding saying pivot, but I'll say it again today. Just said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, one of our philosophies, at least one of my philosophies and in our inner circle, we even have this in our core values is, you know, expansion, but evolution. It's like, and I feel that it's like, you always have to be learning and growing and finding something new that keeps you excited and helping people in other ways or different ways. And that's what, a, like with this current situation, what is forcing a lot of doctors to actually consider is how do I do things differently moving forward? So um, I think that's really, and I mean, I'm hearing from a lot of doctors too, who are, who have gone through those multiple different phases, but we all have something in common yeah. in what, you know, the situation that we're in right now, which brings us back to our, um, our motto here at the chiropractic philanthropist, which is we are all more alike than we are different. Mm. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to learn a little bit more. I, I actually, I already know what this is, but I want you to share with us, you know, what is something that's really cool that you're working on something? I know you've been working on a lot of different things, but you know, share with us like you, what you are currently doing, like, especially when it comes to virtual, because you've had to evolve, adapt. Yes. Yeah. So something that the thing that one of the things I'm most excited about right now is a program, really an experience that I created in the last few months called Dr. Mo Knows, which is an interactive science and patient education program where we I come together with a group of doctors every two weeks and we just dissect some of, you know, an interesting new piece of research that's become available in the profession mm -hmm. or a book chapter or a concept. And we just, you know, drill that down into its, you know, simplest form. Yesterday, we just had a program where I brought one of the authors of the paper in. And it was so fun and so <laughs> That's exciting. So cool. Yeah, for some of these, you know, docs and students who are in the program to actually be able to be asked the author of the researcher questions. Wow. And so it's just a really fun experience where, you know, most docs are afraid to get into the science. They either feel like, I don't, I don't have a science head or I don't have the time or who wants to read a boring article. And, and I just break it down so that it's in bite-sized pieces that they can then use. You know, nobody expects you to go out and share the article contents with your patients, but if you could take the message, you know, mm. for me, my mantra is change someone's brain and you change their life. 
a lot of the focus is on what's happening in neuroscience and chiropractic. And it's just been incredible. Yeah. And, you know, it's from what I, I, I mean, from here's what my experience was in practice was, I, I don't know if I was ever really fully confident in the literature, like, or my interpretation of the literature. Like I knew I, I if I would read a study, I just went to the conclusion. Yep. <laughs> Like, and now you don't even have to read studies. You could just go read Facebook. At least that's what people think, right? <laughs> well, if it's on there, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's factual. <laughs> or it's Here's on what's, TV. What's different about actually like reviewing the science is that you have a, your certainty goes up like 100%. And that's then that it. just, it changes everything in, in conversations, not just with your patients, but with medical doctors, with any naysayer, any critic, suddenly you feel like you're the fucking expert. Um, and that changes how you navigate the world. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I mean, it's the difference between being, being schooled and schooling someone, right? Like, I mean, there were times when people would ask me something and I honestly, I didn't, I couldn't give them like a, a solid answer. Like, I mean, I, but I, I mean, in the same respect, it'd be like, well, if I didn't know, I would go get the answer yeah. for them. But I, I, it is an energetic thing. Like if I was doing a group report, doing an ROF, or even if it was just someone was asking me a question, it's, if, it's that confidence and certainty that you have inside that people are looking for. And it's a tell. They can, they can tell whether or not you know what you're talking about or you're bullshitting. A hundred percent. And there's yeah. nothing more powerful than having a hundred percent conviction in what you're saying. Yeah. Because people see that that passion is there. And uh, it's great to be passionate, but you need to be passionate and effective yeah. and informed, right? And I think that changes the game. So, so if someone wants to go and check out actually, Dr. It's under, it's drmonows.com. That's the yeah. website address, right? Yep. D-R-M-O-K-N-O-W-S. All right. So Dr. Mo knows. So I'll just say that again. So everyone yeah. can catch that, but I'll throw it in here again before we, before we wrap up the conversation today. So, you know, what I'd love to do is actually jump into um, what we call the TCP time machine. So back to the future. It's kind of cheesy, but we do this anyways. Yeah. So uh, we're going to put you in the TCP time machine. We're going to send you back to a younger version of yourself. Now this is right after you came out of chiropractic college. You have all the knowledge and experience that you have today, um, what would you say to that younger self? I would say, what would I say? I would say contrary to what you think, you don't know everything. <laughs> you can't do this alone and that you should have a coach right from the start. Nice. And I think that never goes away. And, and you know, is it possible that the coach needs change? Sure. but. Yeah, that. Yeah, I have a coach. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't. I think. I think the only time I ne I did not have a, a coach was was like uh, 20, 2019, almost the entire year. Mm. Um. So yeah, it's vital. Again, coming back to this, all links together. See how this all comes back? It's like all <laughs> links back to really um inner work, outer work. Uh. Talking about also, and Dr. Mo doesn't always know, so maybe. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> but the URL is Dr. Mo knows. Um, and then also, you know, the, the, just getting, getting solid on, on and confidence and certainty, especially when it comes to literature. And I'll tell you right now, and anyone who's listening right now, Doc, like you have to be confident. You're going to need to be incredibly certain moving forward as, as the lights start to come back and the desk settles because you're going to get some really poignant questions that are going to be coming up very soon. And everyone's Googling this SHIT. Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> lots of people think they're an expert, but it's like there's a very thin veneer of understanding. Yeah. And if you can dip down deep below that veneer and, and be that voice of confidence and reason for people, you're going to be the go-to. You're going to be the trusted advisor. And here, I'm, I don't want to get into a fear conversation here, but I mean, one of the, one of the things that would happen is people would go see their medical doctor and they would, their doc didn't just simply because they didn't understand the literature or they didn't know what we do or understand, they would say, no, don't go and get checked. Like you shouldn't see a chiropractor. And I feel like moving forward, that may even, we may have that same kind of a, 
uh, you know, a block coming up, um, but it's going to be for a different reason. Would you agree? I mean, we might see some of that. Yeah, I think so. And really, that, I mean, that's going to vary from region to region. But here's the thing, right? Medical doctors actually don't read journal articles either. No. And so if you can just say, you know, if you're getting that kind of message from your patients, ask them, send them, be an advocate for them and send them back to the doctor with the question. Um, and from what literature are you getting this uh, logic? Can you point me to an article that says that chiropractic is bad or that I should first, what is the reasoning behind why I shouldn't go? Is it a feeling or is it based on um, actual data. And then they'll be like, uh, 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 cause there isn't any. Yeah. Opinion, basically opinion versus like, there's a lot of opinion slinging everywhere. Yeah. 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 And when I say opinion, it's like mass more majority opinion. So like getting a group of doctors together who say that same thing is not the same as research. No. Right. I mean, we've experienced that here in Canada. I remember my first year of practice, there was an article on the front page of the National Post, which is our second largest um, national paper. And uh, it said chiropractic can cause stroke. And it was based on an opinion paper of an opinion of five neurosurgeons yeah. based on nothing, no data. And in fact, just because I want to close that loop really quickly. Yeah. There is no basic science or clinical research data that shows a causal relationship between chiropractic and, and um, CVA. Yeah. End of story. And I mean, because let's, let's face it, if there was, none of us would be able to get any, like get insurance. No, <laughs> it's a joke. It's the biggest joke. If you look at the cost of chiropractic insurance, what was it like? Maybe two thousand dollars a year. A, a neurosurgeon pays like fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a month. Where's yeah. the Where's the risk? It's not in the chiropractic office. Insurance companies are not into goodwill. Yeah, like if you're an anesthesiologist, I mean, it's it's kind of like a guessing game, I think. Oh yeah. And so, <laughs> it's like no, they you, just. They rule the narrative, right? Like yeah. they get to control the narrative. And so that's why we don't hear about one in 13 visits to the uh, medical doctor results in error. Um, yeah. Anyway, we don't need to yeah. talk about that. Well, anyway, and, and, we well I mean, it, it's an important conversation because I think a lot of us, I think again, moving forward with confidence and certainty is, is actually knowing what, what you're talking about and knowing the literature and having the facts versus just going like, this is an opinion based, like this is a majority opinion. So I think it's a, it's an important discussion for docs, uh, especially when um, I feel like there's so many docs who are going to be, are currently, or may be vulnerable in their practice moving forward or feel vulnerable. Yeah. So last section here. Thank you for that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to head into a resource. Now you can give any resource, but it's something like either a book you, you're reading or have read. It could be a podcast you're listening to. It could be someone you're following. Um, any resources that you would love to drop or a resource that you would love to drop that docs could, could go seek out right now? Hmm. You know, I think an area that uh, a lot of we as chiropractors are constantly putting our hands on people. And an area that I think we may be lacking is in trauma informed um, care. And that mm -hmm. is just being aware of what people's experience in the world has been and what's the best way that you can connect with somebody and, and not, uh, you know, create any triggers and, or things like that happening. And so there's a number of resources around that. Um, Peter Levine's Waking the Tiger. He's the guy that created somatic experiencing. Mm. You know, if we have some extra time right now, why not upskill? Things like somatic experiencing and how we experience the world and trauma in our bodies is something I think should be taught in, a car, in chiropractic school. Um, and Gaber Mate, he's a brilliant guy that talks a lot. He wrote a book called When the Body Says No. Mm. And I think that's a must read for anybody that provides healthcare on the planet, maybe for everybody, Gaber, G-A-B-O-R, Mate, M-A-T-E, when the body says no. Um, yeah. I've never seen a time when, you know, this, clearly this is unprecedented, but I've never seen a time when people are seeking more knowledge than ever before. Like, well, and there's pressure, right? Because here you are, you have some extra time. Some people are saying, 
upskill. Some people are saying meditate, do personal development. It's like whatever you, whatever, well, I, this is my advice. My advice is whatever you feel really called to do, that's what you should be doing. And, you know, don't listen too much to the people that are on social media 24 seven. Just do what feels right in your body. Have a couple of really trusted advisors and, you know, tap into them. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the circle in. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, all right, everyone. So I want to thank Dr. Monique Andrews for being on the show today, TCP. You can actually head over to the chiropractic philanthropist.com. We will have a webpage dedicated to our discussion with Dr. Mo today. Um, we're also going to have a link. So you can actually a direct link that goes to Dr. Mo knows.com. If uh, Dr. Mo would like to drop any other links in there, we'll drop them in there as resources. Uh, if you're on your mobile, go ahead and actually open up the show notes right now, and you should be able to find that link or those links right in the uh, inside of the description. Cool. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. And so, as I say, for giving back today. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. It's a real treat to get to uh, spend some time with you this afternoon. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.